What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to have a little bit of a check-in on what's going on with Romance Dawn, specifically the singles. We need to have a look at what the most expensive cards are, if the order's gone and been shaken up, and exactly how much we should be paying for these cards right about now. Sound like a plan? Good. And we will also obviously have a little bit of a look at whether the prices are trending up, down, etc. Because you know what, ladies and gentlemen? That is a kind of thing we do. And we do actually have quite a nice, easy, even top 10 here. So let us start off at number 10 with the alternate art of Bo Hancock, which I say is coming in somewhere in the region of about $75. It is worth noting that these, it, it's hard to get an exact price for these. So when I'm giving you these prices, I've looked at a bunch of places, I've checked on TCG Player, I've checked the recent solds on TCG Player, because that's pretty important. I've had a look around on eBay and a bunch of other sites, and I've come to what is a fair price, but it is not some guarantee that this is what every single copy is going to sell for, or anything stupid like that. So this is selling for about $75 at the moment, and it seems to be coming down quite steeply. We see that we had a high of 110, and it did jump up initially, as all of these cards tended to do when the hype really kicked off. But then it started coming down quite nicely, and this is another one that over time, especially as supply continues to increase, should keep going down. Bo Hancock is a popular enough character. And the card is fine. Don X1, when attacking or blocking, you draw a card if you've got five or fewer in hand. It's a cool card. And it's a popular enough character, and certainly the artwork helps. But this, I don't think, is ever going to be a real powerhouse card like that. Now, in a number nine, we've got the alternate art of Trafalgar Law. And this is a very good card. Now, this one we've got coming in at around about $80. And oh, I will mention, there are a couple of them that I will have as the same rough value. Please know that if I'm putting them at the same rough value, I have had a good look around and made sure that the one higher on the list is generally selling a bit higher. And this is another one, and you're going to see this through most of these, that jumped up initially and then came back down and hasn't come all the way back down. And I don't think any of them are going to come all the way back down yet, just purely because... We don't have full supply yet. We don't have, you know, exactly what we want in terms of every card being available everywhere and all the product being on shelves and all of that. Things are getting better, but we're not quite there in terms of the full drop in value. In terms of the card, it is a blocker. And on play, you can put a character of a cost of three or less from your hand onto the field as long as you return a character to your hand. Great for swapping a one-cost character with a three-cost character later in the game. So play your one-cost support early, swap them out for bigger characters later. Very good card, sees a whole bunch of play. And this one, there's, there's no ifs, buts, or maybes. It is a great card that sees a huge amount of play. Now, Monkey to Luffy, the leader, is coming in here at number eight. And this is, again, about $80, but it trends higher generally than we see from Trafalgar Law. Now, this is another one that jumped up very quickly initially, but has fallen down. Hasn't yet fallen all the way down, but as we've said, should keep falling when supply increases. Now, this one, I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. This one is really not that great of a card. Especially in the OPO1 format, we did see Luffy seeing a bunch of play, but it was the starter deck Luffy. That was the Luffy card that really did see the play and, you know, got the aplomb, so to speak. And this isn't a terrible card, because once per turn you can pay four to set a supernova or straw hat crew with a cost of five or less active with an extra thousand power. Being able to restand your best characters with a bit of extra power is kind of cool. But it's a bit expensive and a bit awkward, and the starter deck Luffy just proved to be better. But this is still an alternate art leader, and they are amongst the most sought-after cards in the game. And it's a Luffy, and that tells you basically what you need to know. Now, in at number six, we've got the leader that I got from my initial box. That is Don Quixote do Flamingo, which is trending at right around about $100. Now, this one... And again, you're going to see this all the way through. 
jammed up initially, dropped down a bit, not dropped down all the way. Although I will say this one does seem to be dropping a little bit, a little bit better than some of the other ones we're seeing on this list. But this is a very, very good card. It's got a phenomenal skill whereby Don X2, when attacking, you pay one Don, reveal a card from the top of your deck. If it is a seven Warlord of the Sea character of a cost of four or less, play it for free, rest it. And we've got ways to manipulate the top of your deck to make sure that happens. Was really good in the OPO1 meta. I was expecting this to really drop off in the OPO2 meta. I was not expecting this to survive because it really didn't survive over in Japan when they flicked over into OPO2 not in any real substantial way but this is clinging on I'm seeing winning deck lists for this all over this is clinging on a lot better than I expected it to either way clearly a very good card makes perfect sense to get a space on this list in at number six we've got the alternate art of Yamato and this one is properly all over the place big up big down and this is one that's actually been jumping up a lot lately which is kind of cool especially as this is the other alternate art i got from my initial box and yes in hindsight the first box i opened with the doflamingo leader and yamato yeah that was a um that was a really good box that was a very strong box this one is trending around about a hundred dollars as well You'll see the recent solds are either side. It's, it's a bit hard. This one does fluctuate more than most. But it's a five cost character with double attack and banish. Which is pretty gosh darned awesome. And honestly here, it's an alternate art secret rare. They have low pull rates. It's as simple as that. Plus it's a playable card which, you know, doesn't hurt. Although not the most playable on this list. Now, in at number five, we've got Roanoa Zoro. Still a card I'm hoping to pick up for a good price. Although the more time goes by, the dumber I look. Now, for me, it's the Akira Igawa artwork. That is just absolutely over the top stunning. And I know I'm not the only one that thinks that. But it is also fair to say that this is a phenomenally playable card. And it's nice and simple, right? It is a free cost character with Rush. You can attack the turn you play it. And it really is as simple as that. Free cost character with Rush. That is... It's cheap, frankly. That is a cheap card. That is a cheap Rusher. And it's one of the reasons Red is good. You don't have to play Zorro. But your deck's generally better when you do. So yeah, people are... Now this one I'm putting at about $110. $110. And we've seen it sell for sub 100, but I think my wanting to pick it up for quite a bit less than that might have to be put on the back burner for now. In at number four, we've got the leader Trafalgar Law, and this is one that isn't letting up. We've seen the general singles price for Romance Dawn, which is jump up initially and then start coming down. That is not what is happening with Trafalgar Law here. It has gone up, and sure, we've seen a couple dips here and there, but generally speaking, this one is just on the up. And the reason is really simple. Now, it, it's sitting here at about 150 bucks at the moment, but the reason it keeps going up is because it's a really, really, really good leader. You can pay two once per turn, and if you've got five characters, return a character to your hand, and then play a character with five or less from your hand that's a different colour. So pick up a green, play a red, pick up a red, play a green. Incidentally, this is the other reason why the Luffy is just not seeing a huge amount of play, because this is a considerably better red-green leader. And this lets you swap out characters consistently. A lot of the time, you'll actually use it to play down another Rush Zoro to get a cheeky extra attack. And when we saw this at the Treasure Cup I casted in Birmingham, this is just a phenomenal leader. And when you've got a phenomenal leader, the alternate art is always going to end up being very, very expensive. Speaking of which, in at number three, we've got the alternate art of Roanoa Zoro, which has got a weird graph according to TCG Player, but also don't trust that market price. I'm not sure why it's listing the market price as 115. Something's gone wrong here. This is a $230 card. Now, it was low and jumped up and went down low. And I want to show you this as a bit of a warning. You've got to be careful when you're looking at TCG Player. 
not because they don't do good work, they do great work, but because they're amalgamating a bunch of different information. And sometimes you will find that a few sales basically throw everything off. Don't be fooled. This is not a $115 card. That is half of the value of this card. This is a $230 card. Because, and, and look, Rowan Ozora is one of those, when I first saw it, it seemed very underwhelming. Oh, Don X1, extra thousand to your characters. No playing characters for free or any of that. Just, yeah, everyone gets an extra thousand. But it's one of those where you play a few games and you realize an extra thousand on all of your characters is utterly broken. It was great in OPO1. It's great in OPO2. It is still seeing playing success in OPO3. And the graph might look weird at the moment. But trust me, ladies and gentlemen, this one is not going that down that much anytime soon because this is going to remain a phenomenal card. Now, in a number two, we've got another card that's not going anywhere anytime soon. We've got the alternate art of Nami, which I've put in a $240 card just a hair above Roanoa Zoro. Now, what we've got here is another card of a very popular character. Everybody loves Nami. And to be fair, I've been reading a manga lately she is kind of awesome uh the artwork obviously helps and we've actually got a very playable card a very playable card because what we've got here is on play look at the top five cards of your deck find a straw hat crew character other than nami pop it in your hand place the rest of the bottom of your deck in any order incidentally this is a great one cost early game option for searching and then replacing with a better character using trafalgar law that is something we see over and over again and everything about this card from the playability to the art to the character it's just happy everybody loves it and frankly we did see a sizable dip from 250 down to 200 but it's just been going up ever since then. And this is another card that we would need a real, real increase in supply in order for this to start seeing any real significant drop because everything about this card just goes together to make it very, very sought after. And then obviously at number one, it's, it's Manga Shanks. And that shouldn't really surprise anyone. Manga Shanks has by far the lowest pull rate of any card in the set and not just by far but by design it is supposed to have the lowest pull rate of any card in the set that's kind of the point and it does and it's great <laughs> uh, as for a card you'll notice neither of the other you know even though it's a secret rare you know the alternate art shanks didn't get onto the list it really is just a case of it is that gosh darn rare. And when cards really are that rare and that hard to get hold of, the price will just jump and jump. And it doesn't always matter what the card is, although it helps that Shanks is awesome and everybody loves him. But just the low pull rate here alone is just going to push this card right up. And there we go. That's what you need to know. That's the list. And now it... Oh, I didn't actually tell you. I put it on the screen. It's about $930, but it, it's climbing. You'll notice this graph, there was a little bit of a dip right on release. And then it's been climbing ever since. And unfortunately, this does not seem to be going anywhere. It's leveling out a tiny bit here. But make no mistake about it, this is a card which is um not going to be cheap. Sorry about that. But now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me which of these cards you want to pick up. Tell me which ones you pull. Tell me what you would pay for any of these cards. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio. Where you can support the channel. Get some bonus podcasts. Join a Discord have a chat with us, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.